So yeah, let's see. We have this harbor fight and then we haven't explored all of the top floor of the fort yet. And that's about all I can think of before we head off into the swamp. Actually, if you could uh, use Fireball, that would probably pair better. If you can get it. Please don't get any closer. If you can get it from there, get it. If not, use something else. Aim it a little past them. Yeah, actually, you might be able to hit all three. If we could back it up just a little. Very yeah, I know. Okay, there. That should work. Three, two, one, go. And now they're on fire. And now impale would be good because it would also go boom. That should work just fine. Okay, that was a little weird. Sometimes when you're attacking from further away due to having a slight height advantage or something, it can just get a little weird. A poison dart or rock throw? Yeah, just focus on those two. Poison dart and the rock aren't going to be big enough to hit the third guy. One down. I would maybe hold on to that until more things group together. Uh, you could use Encourage and Clear Minded, though, with those last two points you have. Remember that you have a second bar. I'm ready. Okay, so they're going to try to route around the fire. So there's like a tiny like pixel I can apparently aim for here. But I'm not sure if that would be hitting both of them, so I think I'm just going to move up a little. Glory is mine. All right, at this point the Silent Monk can't move because crippled, so they can't do anything, and that person should just burn. So... I take it this is what the teleporter guy ran into and then yeah, promptly died. Yeah, you can see him. He's right there. Um, He's gone. Because he was dumb enough to not only, you know, not bring along the people who might have tried to help him, but, like, we dropped him off, like, about right here, I think... And from there, yeah, really, his only option was like, that was locked. We had to unlock that to come through. So, like, but he didn't even, like, try to maybe sneak through here to try to get somewhere. Like, honestly, I'm trying to figure out where he could even get to. Because he apparently didn't have any other mobility skills. He just had teleport, which you can't use on yourself. That was the whole reason he needed our help for a little bit. And I'm not even seeing a way to, like, get into the swamps from this area. Yeah, that was just a bad plan of his all around. He needed more help if he wanted to get through. And he decided to ditch us super early. Real smart. And no one's in range for me to try to teleport into that. Uh, 
Oh, I'm just gonna use the Staff of Magnus if I can get... Oh, I can really only see them, and neither of them need to be hit right now, so... I don't know. I don't have very much magic armor, actually, so... I'm, ready. I'm just gonna do that. Just to spend an action point, because you can only save two. hoping our experience evens out once you talk to that merchant in the swamp. Maybe if you aim it at the, the dock. Because see, look at the stairs on the dock. That the archer's on. The archer hunt. Those not those are not dock stairs. Yeah, see how the see it because it's a little higher, you can actually aim something there and you'd hit two of them. Unless you can hit something with your wands, which it might be worth just using the bumpers real quick to see if you can target anything. No, not really. They're just not in good spots right now. So unless you want to move a lot. Maybe over next to that crane, you might be able to hit something from there. Sure if I'll be able to get a fireball over here. Oh, I can. So I could do that. Could hit that one. Unfortunately, they're not in sight for me to teleport them unless I move. Which honestly, at this point, I'm probably just gonna have to do. So and hopefully you moved over far enough that you're not gonna be blocking me because stepping around you would take another action point. You know, you really probably should have done that before you had to run out of the fire because then you wouldn't have been burning anymore. Yeah, you could put Zenith Aura up because that one melee guy is getting awfully close. You might want to put it on me, actually, because I'm just a little closer to him. Yep, he's on fire. Other than that, maybe just use the wands on the ones that are below us. Like, yeah, I'd say the rangers are still the highest priority. The one you were aiming at. the 
shock would stun her out. You would have had to stack that twice, or I would have had to use rain or something. One application of it won't do it. Unfortunately, there's no way for me to hit the Archer and the Inquisitor. So I'm going to go for these guys because it would create more fire for them to have to work around. I'll push him back a little bit, so... Unfortunately, he wasn't in a good position for it to push him off of a ledge or something. I really wish you could rotate this so that the three attacks would be going in a line like this, but as far as I know, there's no way to rotate it. So unfortunately, that makes it not a great option here. So I'm just going to breathe fire on this guy, so now he'll be running back through fire. Unfortunately, this is a water staff, so no matter who I hit, it's not going to be doing as much damage as it could, but... Unless I wanted to hit one of the silent monks, which I really don't. They're not very threatening compared to the Magisters. At least not yet. Radiance. I yield to none. And the look, turbulent wind would also work. I don't think that one even does friendly fire, so you shouldn't have to worry about hitting me. Over a little bit more to your right. There you go. That should hit all of them. Maybe a little more to the right. The right, hun. There you go. Okay, I think at this point the only thing up against us other than the monks, which again I'm not super worried about, is the ranger and the inquisitor that are down there. So I'm going to say hit the ranger. Not what I meant. I tried to hit to see what it would do, and the game went, Oh, you hit the A button twice. No, I did not. But apparently I did. That is more fire than I intended. Okay, well, I'm going to put another Sun Aura on you, because that Inquisitor is probably going to try to run in. I really don't want to use Winter Blast at the moment because that would actually put the fire on her out, but I can use just the staff. Please just keep walking. Why are you climbing down there? You only have melee attacks. Are you just trying to not die? 
which would make sense for pretty much any other character, but I assume that the silent monks don't really have much in the way of self-preservation. Uh, you have Impale ready. You have a lot of skills off cooldown now, actually. Because, yeah, there's two of them down there, and if you were to actually use the top-down view, you could probably... Yeah, I think you could hit both of them with an Impale. Move up a little bit so it's the widest part of the circle. There you go. And now it's just those two, which are too far apart to do a whole lot, but maybe toss poison at the one that has full magic armor. Finish him off. Okay. Battle over. I'm gonna go the fire and start. I was in like some tiny pixel of not being on fire, so I just decided staying put was the best no option heal. until that went out. Okay. I think that's everything in this area. But yeah, as far as I can tell, you cannot get into the swamp from here unless you have something like tactical retreat or flight or, you know, one of the various mobility skills that lets you just jump. Because there's not even like a broken ladder or some vines or something off of here that would let you like jump off of this and not be able to climb back up unless you can get around there where you're at. Can you get around there? I, the giant, takes... Okay, so no, you actually can get out into the swamp from here. There's a little path here. So he theoretically could have made it, I guess, but he had to run right past a bunch of magisters. And I see someone over here. The woman traces glyphs in the air, and you cringe, expecting a barrage of ice and fire. Instead, a bit of smoke sputters forth. She cries to the skies in frustration, in a recognizable rail-thin rasp. My lord, I've loved you. I've obeyed you. What's my sin? How long must I suffer? She sees you approach and punches her fist in your direction. Her face flushes as red as your own scales. It's her, the one that destroyed the ship to Fort Joy. You. You are my sin. Who is this lord that you keep talking to? He is the judge, and he has condemned your kind. I smell the stench of your guilt with every god's damn breath you take. She turns her head to the heavens once more. I offer this sacrifice to you. Return me to your side. Make me howl. Come between us again. Luckily, it seems like her crazy source powers aren't working at the moment, so... Let's go. Big rock. I don't know if the fire will work right now because she's technically standing in water. Just hit her with Impale and chain it to the campfire. That'll light it up anyway, and then you don't have to possibly waste a fireball if it doesn't work. I yield to none. Yeah, she's not quite in the fire, but nice. you can use... The poison dart. Okay. I really wish we had some physical damage right about now. It might be worth investing. You have necromancy, right? I believe you started with that. I think I have some of that, yeah. Uh, yeah, That most those spells mostly do physical damage. So it might be worth branching out into getting you some necromancy skills so that when we're facing an enemy like this that has much, much, much lower physical armor than magical, we can actually kind of deal with it a bit better. 
Okay, how can I not see? Really? That's too far? Okay, fine. I'm just going to use these then. I was going to try to pull her out of the water, but... And you're probably going to want to use Armor Frost on yourself and possibly healing, too. Glory is fine. Stratus Walk Aura would also keep you from taking damage from the surfaces. is that the fact she's standing in water will actually make your wands more effective so there is that and I'm not in range for an encourage but you could do peace of mind on yourself once again even though she was initially talking to me she's just completely ignoring me and going after you oh no spoke too soon Looks like it hits. Is he well enough to use this? Yes. I'm ready. I doubt I can see you from this range, no. Well, I'm just gonna put magic armor on myself preemptively. I my armor does not grant very much. Okay. I'm still not in range of the encourage, so focus on other stuff. More fireball. Make sure you're not getting yourself in that, that should work. You're out of the fight, I think. No, I'm not. The oh, camera split got screen weird. is just being really, really weird at the moment. Because it's supposed to just stay as one screen when you're in the fight and then only do the force split screen out of combat, but sometimes it gets confused. So honestly, we're at the point where I'm just glad when a game has a split screen option, so I'm not going to complain too much. And unfortunately, I now have no choice but to run, even though I'm also slowed because oil. So most of my AP is going to have to just be movement because I wasn't in range of your Stratus Walk Aura until just now. Yeah, that should just hit her. throw a rock at her. That should be enough at this point. And also yourself, I guess. But who is it? And why? The, the bedroll doesn't put fire out. You really should run into the water or something. Or heal, or... Restoration would have also worked. that oil over here before that becomes too annoying. Okay, and she had Fane's Mask of the Shapeshifter on her. So I can now use that to 
cover for the races that we don't have in the party if we need an elf or a dwarf. And at the very least, there are going to be some reasons that we will occasionally need an elf. This lets us just cover. In fact, I'm going to go ahead and do that. So it is, unfortunately, slightly annoying to use. You have to... Change out your helmet, and then, oh, not what I'm trying to do, skills, revert to original form is one that I'm obviously going to need to use, although you can also just take the helmet off, but transform into elf. Something has changed. You are you, but more. You are another, but not. You look to your hands, your belly, your feet. Flesh you don't know, molded into unfamiliar shapes. You cradle your aching head, where another's memories and wisdoms mix with your own. Your fingers trace a line from your head to your face, feeling not the creases of the mask, but the porous surface of new skin. You lower your arm, blink twice, and step forward in this new guise. So, for example, there are a few things that make elves kind of useful to transform into off and on. I believe that their racial skill, because all this, I believe all of the uh, races get a different civil skill boosted. For lizards, it's persuasion, which is why my persuasion's now only one, because I'm no longer a lizard. But Loremaster went up to two, because for elves, their racial civil skill is Loremaster. For dwarves, it's sneaking. I would argue they get the worst one. I never use sneaking in this game, or at the very least, the few times I've had to use it, the sneaking skill, I think it reduces like the enemy sight cones, makes them smaller. I've never needed that, because you get so many weird mobility skills and other ways to do things. And also... I tend to not stealth around enemies very much. I tend to just want to take them out. So dwarves kind of get the worst one there. At least in my opinion. But another thing that elves can do is they can consume things. They can, they can consume flesh and they gain like memories and experience that way. Sometimes you get skills. Sometimes it's just a bit of flavor text, but if anyone was wondering why I was keeping all of these, yeah, that's why. A single name throbs across your brain. Verdas, Verdas, Verdas. He must escape. He cannot die here. He cannot. Well, that was from a Tusa. So, yeah, she was trying to save Virtus, that elf that we found in the dungeon a while ago, who was already too far gone, and we just put him out of his misery. As the dead man's flesh slides down your throat, you feel his consciousness enter yours. His memories are yours to experience. You are Finn. Your heart is heavy. You know too much. It's all too much. You met, you met him. A bright light blinds you, then fades. You feel a tremendous power in your hands, but they are shaking so hard you can barely use them. Suddenly you're on this very ship, crouched in a corner, hugging your knees. A figure approaches, an older woman. Her eyes are kind. She comes closer. She says she wants to talk. She reaches a hand toward you. You grasp it. The memories end. You are no longer Finn. You return to yourself with a jolt. So yeah, that was the guy who was murdered on the ship. And apparently he ran afoul of the woman that we just took out. You are ever sodden, ever sandy. The smell of guts and sea waste cling to you like a ghost. You sought freedom, the life of a seaman, but you didn't find it. Early memories are overshadowed by a terrifying death, a tempest of teeth, scales, and snarls. You never imagined it would end like this. That was probably from the crocodilians. Looking around for joy, you feel excited. A new environment to explore, new people to meet, new challenges to overcome. Who knows what could happen here? 
Apparently nothing good, considering how I'm currently experiencing those memories. You hated your work for the Order. You wanted to be a stonemason, marry the baker. You still dream about it every night. You cover your face with your hands. You've just heard the news. The elven homelands have been destroyed by death fog. It was your order who did it. How can this be? So the order apparently decided to unleash death fog on the elven homelands at some point. And they appear to be getting more and more exclusively human as this goes on. Like, we've seen a Tusa, but they killed her. And apparently, like, that memory seemed to maybe be coming from an elf. So they have had, they had non-human members at one point, but not so much now. And the few that are left are being driven away or outright killed. You eat Griff's hand. And you see him putting animals, dead for days in the blistering sun, whole into his cooking pot. Oh, God. Yeah. Although, considering what I'm doing right now, apparently elves have a pretty strong constitution. You fought hard on the location of your fortune before passing. You wanted an elf to find it. You urge whoever tastes your flesh to go and enjoy what you cannot. Your mind is empty as a new moon. Something seems to have cleared it out, scrubbed the corners, bleached the holes. The nothingness is oddly comfortable. One of the silent monks, maybe? You hardly recognize him, but there he is, Alexander. You're shocked to see a sorcerer's collar around his neck. He seems so different now compared to how he looked back in school. So on one hand, like Alexander is, you could argue, well, he's at least going through some of the stuff he's putting other sorcerers through because he's wearing the collar and all. How is he supposed to ascend if he cannot use source? Did anyone think that through? A sea voyage. Children and adults huddled together for warmth and comfort. You were a slave to the ancient empire not so long ago. You had a taste for wine and ale, as well as a variety of other sensual pleasures. Life is a coffer replete with countless delights. You see him coming for you. You saw what he did to the others. You pray, you pray, you pray, you pray. Well, can't remember where we got all these from, but that one, that one may have been Niles. That would make, like, not Niles himself, obviously, but one of his victims. That would seem to make sense. You are nothing. You are no one. You do not exist. Not really. Well you are nothing. You are no one. So yeah, there are a few like that one where not all of these have unique lines. That's just one of the ones that can come up. Of happiness. You played the flute. You wrote poetry. The music ended in Fort Joy. Yeah, I can imagine. You were a tough dwarven smith of great experience and talent. You wanted to make a name for yourself. But you ran out of time. I wonder if there was originally going to be a crafting skill like there was in the first original Sin game. Because it seems like that would have maybe given a point to it or something. But they didn't include that in this, so... so many years twinkle behind you like distant stars. Tiny, but beautiful. You smell wheat hail. You hear a chorus in a tavern. You feel joy. And for anyone wondering why I'm keeping raw mutton in the backpack, it's because you need that for a quest in Act 2, and it specifically has to be raw mutton. 
So that's why there's we're just keeping some in the backpack for now so I don't forget and sell it. Yeah, at this point, I... I mean, that, that freed up some carry capacity just getting rid of all of those so we can continue for a bit longer before we have to do an inventory sort. Reverting to my clearly superior form. So we still haven't explored all of the fort. We've explored most of it, but there's a bit left. We also, I guess the merchant that you need to talk to, Bill, is there. And then for the dogs, we need to find a pool of source to steep the honey bone in to help them any further. And looking at the journal. Yeah, that that's, that's about all that's left. It's in the fort. So let's go talk to that merchant since he's like right there. Give me that crossbow if he knows what's good for him. Yep, you tell him. Off you go. The hooded man exudes an aura of restrained menace. As he raises his head, the hood falls back, revealing the gleaming bone visage of an undead. He grins in seeming recognition. Ah, even been messed, I presume. I am a friend. You can call me Zalisgar. He spits something dark and viscous onto the earth. You notice the little horror wriggling deep into the soil. Okay. Told him that that magister told me to him seek him out, and he's spitting. Such a squirmy little twit is Boris, no? What icky little favors did he manage to squeeze out of you for the aid? Uh, he only squ Squeeze my page. Yeah, we, we certainly didn't do what he asked. So either of those, I guess. Yeah. Ah, his speciality. In light of that, I'll keep it brief. You'll find it easier to corner Alexander out here. And this delicious little morsel called Shadow's Eye should help you send him to his rightful place beside his father in the Hall of Echoes. The undead's bony claw pulls an elaborate crossbow from seeming thin air. It's cold as the grave to the touch, and enveloped in misty shade. He proffers it to you, along with a single rank-smelling arrow. Ah, that should help. Now, run along with your new toys. I've my own errands to run, you know. Okay, I'll take my leave. Until we meet again, Ben Mezd. Okay, so the... Undead skeleton was far more agreeable to talk to than that magister. Honestly, no surprise. I mean, your contact was a magister. Yeah. <laughs>